<coughs> okay, so exponential <coughs> equations for what we did Friday. Log equations are equations that have a log or maybe a couple logs in them. So we're just going to start out a couple basic equations here. They're, we're going to convert these to an exponential. So it's kind of like backwards from what we did on Friday. So if I have just a plain log, do you guys remember what the little subscript is if it doesn't say anything? If I just have the word log, what's the base? 10. Okay, so you don't have to do this. I'm just going to rewrite this real quick for myself. I like to have the base written in there so I can have something to move with. What you want to do, isolate whatever you're taking the log of. So this is just the log of x. So first thing I'm just going to do real quick, I'm just going to add 10. Okay, so I have common log is base 10. So log base 10 of x is equal to 2. Okay. Now, literally, all you have to do to get rid of the log, we're going to reverse what we were doing in our last lesson. We're just going to swing this to the other side. <coughs> that gets rid of the logarithm. So the x just stays where it's at. Now, that base of the log becomes the base of the exponent. So just think about that 10, like pushing that 2 up in the air. So this would be x is 10 squared. And then literally, like grab your calculator, or maybe you know that, that's 100. And that's the answer. And that's all you have to do. It's not too bad, but you do need to know what the base is. So if you just see the letter, or the word log, remember that's base 10. Otherwise, I think a lot of the rest of these actually have a little subscript. So for this one, I've got the log base 2 of x plus 4. All I'm going to do, my logs by itself, I've got parentheses around that x plus 4. We're just going to swing this 2 over here. And so the x plus 4, you can drop the parentheses if you want to because I'm getting rid of the log when I convert this to an exponential. Then the 2, that base of the log, becomes the base of your exponent. So it's going to push that 6 up in the air. And then grab your calculator if you want to. Or 2 to the 6th power is 64. And then literally all we got to do is just move the 4 real quick away from the x by subtracting it. So my answer would be 60. Now, the next one has a 4 out in front of the log, so you want to get the log all by itself before you try and convert anything to exponential form. So I'm going to just divide both sides by 4 real quick. And it's okay if this is equal to a negative number, you just can't take the log of a negative number. So I'm not doing that here. I, don't have, an, I have 7 minus 2x, which that expression could be negative if we per, put in certain values of x, but it's not going to cause us a problem here. You just can't take the log of a negative number. All right, so then we're going to swing this. You'd have 7 minus 2x. 8 is going to push that negative 3 up in the air. Now, you guys don't have to rewrite this as a fraction, but this is not a negative number. That would be 1 over 8 to the third power. This is going to be a decimal here, so I'm just going to work the rest of this with my calculator. Um, if I go ahead and do that, what I'm going to do to get the x alone, I'm going to subtract the 7 from that number, and then after I do that, I'm going to divide by that negative 2 in front of the x. So I'm just going to do it all right on my calculator screen. So I have 1 over 8 to the third, which is a super tiny decimal. It's like 1 over 512 is what it would be. I'm going to subtract 7 from that. And then I'm going to divide that by negative 2. <clears throat> and my answer ends up being, again, if they, if they ask, um, we're going to go three decimal places. If it's not a nice answer, the other ones we've been working with have been decent. So about 3.499. Anybody have a question so far? <clears throat> okay, all those just had a single log in them. So the rest of the examples today, we're going to have multiple logs within the same problem. So I'm going to see if you guys remember these properties. Okay, so first goal is going to be to write a single logarithm. Then we can swing the base and just solve it. So um, do you guys remember if I have two logs, same base, this says log base 3 of 9, log base 3 of 5x equals 4. If I have the same base and I'm adding... If I put those together in a single log, what does that, what does adding turn into if you put it together? Do you guys remember from the properties? Multiplication. Okay, so we're just going to squish these together. So addition turns into multiplication. I'm going to write out an extra step so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to take 9 times 5x, 
which you can always multiply. So 9 times 5x would just go ahead and multiply those numbers, get 45x, and then equals 4. If you want to go right to like, I know 9 times 5x is 45x, go right ahead. But that's where I'm getting that from. Properties of logs, if you're adding them, if you put them together, it's called condensing it into a single log. You just multiply what you're taking the log of. And then this turns into the problems we were just doing. We're just going to swing this, get rid of the log. So keep the 45x right where it is. Now, when we get rid of the log, we change this to an exponential. So the 3 pushes that 4 up in the air. So this will be 3 to the 4th power. And I think that's 81. And then we would just do 81 divided by 45. Okay, I got that's what I got, 1.8. Good deal. So we're just using some properties here. Okay. Now, if you guys remember, and we I could have actually done this in um, the last question on the other example, but if you have a number in front of a log, this is called the power rule. That becomes a power on whatever you're taking the log of. So let me just apply this real quick. I'm going to write that out. So that first term is really the log base 2 of x to the 4th. And that second term I'm subtracting here is going to be log base 2, 3 squared. And if you and, and you can skip this step, but whoops, this is a minus sign. Log base two. So three squared is nine. So I'm just gonna simplify that just a tiny bit. Okay. Now, do you guys remember if you have subtraction, what does subtraction turn into if I division, if we try and put it together? Okay, so this one log base two subtraction turns into division. Whatever comes first, the x to the fourth in this question goes on the top of the fraction. So the x to the fourth over whatever's being subtracted, which is nine, and then that's equal to seven. Then I have a single log. This is a little more complicated than the last question we just did with what we're going to have to do after, but similar. We're going to swing this to the other side. So we'd have x to the fourth over nine. And this gets rid of the log. We're converting it to an exponential. So that base of the, the log, the 2, push that 7 up in the air. So that'll be 2 to the 7th power, which I think is 128. But I'm just going to check real quick. Yes. All right. So x to the 4th over 9 is 128. Okay. What would you do from here? Like what would my, if I'm trying to get x alone, what would my next step be? I have x to the fourth over 9 equals 128. Yeah, let's move to 9, right? Okay, so we're dividing by 9, so we're going to get rid of the 9. So take this, and so we would end up just x to the fourth here, and then whatever that is, I got 1,152 if you take 128 times 9. Okay, now, how do I get rid of a fourth power? You can do a, say that one more time. Like a radical, is that what you think? Okay, two options here, two options. And I'll show you both, but I'll show you why I like one better. Okay, you can, to get rid of a fourth, like a, a x squared, you take a square root, right? Okay, to take, get rid of a fourth root, or fourth power, you take a fourth root. Okay, the other option, and this is what I would do only because it's less buttons to push on the calculator. I would take both sides. The reciprocal of 4 is 1 fourth. The fourth root is the same thing as the 1 fourth power. I will show you how to do both on the calculator. Um, <clears throat> but it's less buttons if you do the, the rational exponent. Both of them will work. Okay, so if you want to do a fourth root, if you guys have a graphing calculator, you want to find the button that says math. It's like the fourth button down on the left side. And if you go down here, sorry, I'm not on the menu, right? Okay, it's the fifth option. There's like a little X in front of the radical. Just hit enter, and then you can type in the four to be the index of the root, and then the 152, or 1152, sorry. If you guys have an 83, if you have an 83, the only difference is you just have to type what you want the index to be before you go into that menu. So if you have an 83, just literally type the number 4, hit math, and then get that same button. 
and it's going to do it on my calculator too. But you just have to hit the, the index that you want first and then do that. Okay, other option, and this is what I always use. So, because I don't have to go into that menu and mess around with that. I just take the number, I use the little caret button above the division key, and then I want the one-fourth power. It's the same exact number. It's just for me, it's easier to do it that way. So I usually use the rational exponent instead of the radical, just because, like I said, it's a little faster than going in and finding that on that menu and everything. So if you want to take, like, if you have x to the third, you want to take a third root, you could do that, or you could do one-third power. If you have a square root, you can do the one-half power. I do that all the time. Either way, the answer here should be, um, let's see, 5.8. 826. Now, normally, if you take like a square root or a fourth root, you're supposed to put a plus or a minus. I am not going to do that here because if you guys look back to my original problem, if I put a negative number in for x right here, that would be me taking the log of a negative number. So I don't want to put the plus and minus. Okay. And I'm going to try one more here with you guys. So division turns in, or sorry, subtraction turns into division. So I've got log base 8 of 6 minus log base 8 of 3x. So I'm going to put the 6 on the top, 3x on the bottom. Push that together to get a single log. Now you can here, if you want to, you can just simplify that 6 over 3x. You can reduce that fraction. 6 divided by 3 is 2, so I'm going to leave a 2 on the top, and then it would just be a plain x on the bottom. And once I'm there, I'm just going to swing that 8, get rid of that. So I got 2 over x, 8 to the negative 2 power. And if you guys remember, <coughs> that's 1 over 8 squared if I want to get rid of the negative exponent there real quick. And I'm setting it up this way because it actually makes it a little bit easier to solve a proportion since my variable's in the bottom. So that's why I went ahead and just wrote that as a fraction. <coughs> and then I'm just going to cross multiply divide here. So my variable is the x there. So all we got to do, just 2 times 64, which is going to give you 128. And x times 1 would just be 1x. So the answer <coughs> for that one would end up being a nice number there. It's 128. Does anybody have any questions so far? We're going to do a couple harder ones on the back. Okay, now, sometimes the logs are not on the same side of the equation, and that's what you got going on here. So I got a couple different examples of how this might turn out for you. So the first question on the back, I have the log base 2, uh, let's see, 8x plus 2, and then the log base 2 of 16x plus 4 on the other side. Anybody know how to do this one? Uh, would you be... Uh, we, could, we could maybe do, it would be hard. We'd, we'd, we'd have to move one log to the other side and then use the exponent properties and set it equal to zero is what we would have to do. But there is actually an easier way to do this problem. Anybody have any idea? I've got log base 2 of the 8x plus 2 on one side, and i got log base 2 of 16x plus 4 on the other side. Any idea? Don't think about it too much. Exactly, exactly. Okay, these are both the same. They're both log base 2, just exactly equal to each other on either side. So this literally just goes away. So you just solve the equation, 8x plus 2, and then 16x plus 4. <clears throat> they have to be the same base. If they're not the same base, you can't do that. If you had something else added or subtracted to the side, then we couldn't do that either. But if you just have a log equal a log, and that's it, just set what's in the parentheses equal to each other, and you're good. All right, so I'm going to subtract 8x. I just like to keep my variable positive. There's different ways to do this, but I'm going to subtract 4 in the same step because I didn't leave myself a lot of room. We get negative 2 would be equal to 8x. And then divide by 8. So x is going to be negative 1 fourth. And I would just check real quick, if you plug that back in, just make sure you're not taking the log of a negative number. And if you plug in x, for, or plug in one, negative 1 fourth for either one of these, it's not going to cause you a problem. Because it'll be, well, it'll actually be 
zero on both sides. It would be log base two is zero on both sides. So you're good. Okay, now the next problem. These next couple problems are actually a little harder. All right, so I have not just a log and a log on, on the other side. I have this extra piece here, which has a two minus a log base six of x plus four. What you want to do in that situation, if you can't just get a log equal to a log, put the logs on the same side. So I'm going to add this whole term, this x or log, log base six of x plus four, add that whole thing to the other side. And when I do that, what I'm going to do is apply my log properties to write this as a single log. And I'll just leave that 2 over there on the right. So I'm literally just adding that whole term to the other side. So in that case, addition just turns into multiplication. We're just going to squish this guy together. So I'm going to get log base, whoops, sorry, 6. And then we're going to do x minus 4 times x plus 4. And I know this is a little bit annoying, but we're going to have to FOIL. Before I do that, though, let me just get rid of the log by converting this to an exponential. So I'm going to swing that 6 over to the other side. Just gets rid of the log. You'd have the x minus 4 times x plus 4. 6 is going to push that 2 up in the air into being an exponent, converting it from log form to exponential form. And however you guys, if you want to draw yourself a little box or foil, whatever's easier for you, the middle term is going to cancel out here because this is actually a difference of squares. So if I do x times x, we'll get x squared. x times 4, I get a plus 4x. But in this particular problem, I'm going to turn around and get minus 4x. And then <coughs> negative 4 times 4, negative 16, just simplifying here. Um, 6 squared is 36. So these two terms, the 4x and the negative 4x, are going to go. You're going to get x squared minus 16 equals 36. And this does not have a nice answer, but I'm going to add the 16 to the other side. So I'd get x squared, and that's equal to 52. And then it's up to you, whatever's easier, either square root or 1 half power. This is not going to be a nice number, so I'm just going to go three decimal places. So about 7.211 for my answer. And again, I'm not putting the plus minus. The reason for that is if I had like a negative 7, if I plugged it in back there for the x minus 4, it would make me take the log of a negative number, and I can't do that. So it's just going to be 7.21. I'm not putting a plus minus there. Cannot take the log of a negative number. Okay. Let me pull this back down here. Okay. Now. What I would recommend here, I've got three different logs in this problem. You could put them all on the same side, or what I might just do there, I'm just going to condense this side using my log properties. This is subtraction, so I'm going to squish it together, get division. So I would have just a single log. X plus 1 would go on the top. Don't worry about this. It's not going to be hard. Um, and then 2X minus 3 would go on the bottom. The other side is just the log of 8. Now, I don't have any extra, I'm taking the log of everything there, so there's no like plus five added to the side or anything like this. So this kind of turns into that problem above <coughs> where I just have a single log on one side, single log on the other side, same base. These just literally cancel each other out. What I would recommend here though, just real quick, I would do the x plus one, two x minus three. I would just take that eight on the other side and I'm just going to make it into a fraction real quick by writing eight over one. And then we can just do a quick proportion to solve this question here. That's probably the easiest way to do that because I do have variables on the top and bottom. You can't cancel anything in that fraction with the variables because you have adding and subtracting there. So I'm going to do 8 times 2x minus 3. The other side would just be 1 times x plus 1. So just a little distributive property here. We're going to get 16x minus 24. And then if I distribute 1 on the other side, that's not going to change anything. It's just going to stay x plus 1. And then totally up to you. 
I'm going to get all my variables on one side real quick. I'm going to subtract x. And then I'm just going to do this right in the same step. I'm going to add the 24 to the other side there just to save myself some room. So I'd have 15x, oops, 15x, and then 1 and 24 is going to give you 25. And this is going to be a decimal, but it's not going to be a bad one. 25 over 15. And I got 1.6 repeating. If you want to write that as a fraction, it's the same as 5 over 3, either one of those. Anybody have a question? I have one last one, and this one is the hardest one. Okay, so I have log base 3, and I have 3x minus 18 plus the log base 3 of x, and then I just have this 4 on the other side. So I can't, like, cancel out logs on, on both sides because I have this 4. What I want to do is I want to squish this together with just my log properties. So if it's adding, you just squish it together with multiplication. So this can be log base 3. We're going to take 3x minus 18 <coughs> times x, and then the other side just equal to 4. Okay, now you can multiply that right away, or we could just get rid of the log, whatever's easier. I'm going to get rid of the log here first real quick. We're going to get 3x minus 18. I still got to multiply that by x. is going to be equal to 3 to the 4th. I can get rid of the log. Just swing your little base to the other side, pushes that 4 up in the air. And I'm just going to do a little distributive property. This is going to give me just 3x squared minus 18x. And then on the other side, 3 to the 4th power <coughs> is 81. Now, you guys probably have noticed that this is going to turn into a quadratic. So let me set this equal to 0 just real quick. I'm going to move the 81, just subtract it, set it equal to 0. And I promise if you get any question like this, I will make it factorable, or you can always use the quadratic formula. But I would maybe recommend one thing before you try to do either of those. Do all those numbers have anything in common? That's the greatest common factor. They're all divisible by 3. Okay, let's just get rid of that real quick, make it easier to work with. I'm just, everybody on both sides, I'm going to divide by 3. This becomes then x squared minus 6x minus 27. Okay, totally up to you. And if you wanted to, you could use the quadratic formula from the previous step. It'll just be bigger numbers to work with as you go through. But um, quadratic formula, or you can factor. I promise you'll be able to factor if you run into a question like this. Can anybody think of two numbers that if I multiply them, it would give me negative 27, and the same two numbers, if we added them up, we'd get negative 6? If I was trying to factor it? 9 and 3, which one has to be negative? The 9. So x minus 9, x plus 3. Negative 9 times 3 will give you the negative 27. Negative 9 plus 3 will give you the negative 6. Now, your actual answers then would be 9 or negative 3. It's what sets those little parentheses equal to 0. And then just check real quick. If you look back to the original problem, 9 is not going to cause you a problem for either one of these. Like if I plugged in 9, it'd be 27 minus 18. That's a positive number. If I plugged in 9, I'd be taking the log of 9. However, if I plug in negative 3, negative 3 is going to cause you a problem here because you'd be taking the log of a negative number. And then just the plain x, if I take the log and it's a negative 3, that will not work either. So this answer is going to be extra. So just make sure if you've got an answer... If you would plug it back into the original problem, you're not taking the log of a negative number. So the only answer for that question there is going to be 9. Cannot take the log of a negative number. It doesn't exist. All right. Is anybody having a question? <coughs> 